trip. Lord God the Father, just thank you for your word. It's multiplying and growing. Lord, I pray for now and I pray for tomorrow if you're the Terry. And I mean, Lord God, these girls we met, for Ron, for Louise, for Roberto, for yes, Clint, Lord, for Hollywood, for Tracy and Rachel and me, Lord God. I pray you be with my mouth now, Lord. You take it. Throw the flesh to the garbage and let the Holy speak about Jesus today, Lord. I pray for more to be here. Lord, I pray for a work to be here. But now, let's focus upon Jesus Christ and the Gospel of John. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. All right. Amen. I don't know if anybody knows what we're in, but we are in first. We are in John chapter yeah. one. I was going to say first John again. Oh yeah. We are in John chapter one. If you're all surprised, we started in John chapter one. Oh no, I'm I forget how many weeks we've been going, but it's been a while. Uh, about six months. All right. So John one eleven. We worked until he came onto his own, and we got one hundred percent that Jesus is Jewish. He came unto his own, Jewish, and his own received him not. Now, an avenue that we're going now, continue, is Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. Wait a minute. We do that? Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. We did this one. Yeah, this is the lesson you did last week. All right, John, let's see, John 3.13. Mark, what did I do? Mm -hmm. I, I jumped ahead. Last week we did John... All right, we're, okay, let's... The first verse you gave us was 111 and then Matthew 1.1. John 3.13, I skipped the whole section. I was so excited I skipped. All right, John 3.13, we're going to look at he came. Very did he, his own. That's weird. He came. Jesus Christ came. God manifest in the flesh. In John 3.13, And no man has ascended up to heaven. So, who's going up to heaven? No man. But he that came down from heaven. So one that has gone up is one that has come down. Even the Son of Man, which is Jesus Christ, which is in heaven. So now we're looking at a Jesus. He, he was born of a virgin. He had the human nature of Adam. He's called the second Adam. He was born of a virgin so that no earthly father, no sin. Now, I don't know if everybody really thinks about it, around what they call Christmas, Noel, is that yeah, Jesus was born in the Virgin, not in December. But before he was conceived in her womb, he left the heavenly throne and came down. And Jesus came, and he's going to ascend back up. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. And we'll take the last words of Jesus on earth to his disciples, verse 7. And we got to realize, we've already looked at, a couple weeks ago, Jesus leaving the heavenly throne. And how we couldn't explain what heaven is truly like, that he came down this miserable plane, if you remember. I mean, he was heavenly, glorious, wonderful, without sin, born in where a place where cows or sheep. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons, so don't worry about where clothes and all that, which the Father has put in his own power, verse 7. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up Ascended. He came down. He goes up. He was he, uh, taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. While they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? 
This same Jesus was taken up from you in heaven, what we just read, shall so come like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So, Jesus Christ left heaven into the womb of Mary for nine months, born into this miserable, rotten world where animals ate and slept, lived 33 and a half years, died upon the cross for our sin, was buried, arose again, that's the gospel according to the scriptures, He's walking with his disciples now in Acts chapter 1, and he, and they're like, where is he going? Two angels show up, and the most important thing, Jesus, which is taken up into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Christ is coming back. Amen. He's come. He's gone. He's coming back. And He's coming back as that lion in the tribe of Judah. But the world just marvels over the baby. They fairly rarely talk about the man. And when it comes to the man, the baby that grew up, what do we talk about at the time of Jesus' resurrection? We talk about Easter bunnies. We talk about chocolates. We talk about sunrise service. We never mention, mention the man Jesus. Because you can't control the man Jesus. He's in the garden. Who do you seek? We seek Jesus of Nazareth. I am He. And they fell over backwards. So Christ came. He's, he, he was here. He's going back up. Now there's an event before the second advent. There's an event before the tribulation period. Jacob's trouble. He's coming, but He's not coming to the earth. The Bible says those that are alive and those that have died in Christ saved are going to meet in the clouds... There's a cloud mentioned. And when we meet in a cloud, you'll see all those that are saved. You'll never see any unsaved. Praise the Lord. And in that moment when we gather dead and alive, then we're going to see Jesus in the air as the disciples see, saw him in the air. And then he takes us home and probably at that point we'll be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. Then you have seven years of great, seven years of Jacob's trouble, the tribulation period. At the end of the tribulation period, one thing you can mark by the, by the vials, by the trumpets, by the seals. The sun goes dark, the moon goes dark, the stars go dark. There's no light. And then Christ comes back on horseback with his bride behind him. King of kings, Lord of lords. So, everything's been fulfilled by the first advent from the birth to the resurrection. You better believe there's more to come because there's more prophecies. And he came. He's Jewish. His own brethren, that would be Jews. So, we read this other night. Matthew 20. Talk about Matthew. Divide the sheep from the goats. I don't have that written down, but we read that the other night. Oh, did you? Matthew 25 31 to 25 31. Look at that. Matthew, Matthew 25 31. Okay. This is important when we're talking about last week, Jesus being Jewish. Because if you don't get it right, you're not going to get this right. It's 32. About being gathered. Matthew 25 31. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory. There's the second advent. And all His holy angels with Him. That's not the rapture. No angels come at the rapture. And when you say, why do you say that? Because there are people who say, verse 31, there's a church rapture right there. Impossible, as we read on. Don't wait for angels at the rapture. You'll just hold your breath. You won't die because we'll be glory with Him. So when we come back, not, not only is Christ ahead of us, not only are we on horseback or uh, mules, whatever it is, angels are going to be there too. What an army that Jesus has, Christians and angels. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, that would be in Jerusalem. And before him shall be gathered all nations that were in the tribulation. And he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd, John chapter 10, 
divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Now, they'll say that the rapture, the sheep are the Christians, the goats are up. No, at the rapture is only saved. Those that are not saved are left behind. Amen. So, the, so shall the king, capital K, say unto them, so he's already now king on the throne. Say unto him his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, the millennium. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer say, Lord, when saw thee hunger, fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, or clothed thee? When saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? Now here are people standing before Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ said, you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. And they're like, when? Who? What? What are you talking about? They had no idea what they'd done that Jesus Christ is proclaiming righteousness to them. Uh, and verse 40, And the king shall answer and say unto him, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Well, with last week's study, Jesus being Jewish, who would be his brethren here? The Jewish people. So in the tribulation period, for a Gentile to get into the millennium, you've got to take care of that Jew that the Antichrist is chasing and trying to kill. And when you took care of that Jew, your neck is on the line. Because anybody that harbors a Jew would be enemy. Now those Jews are not going to receive that mark, so there will be some other way for them to get food. And they're not going to get their screwdrivers out, they're not going to get their nail clippers out, they're not going to use a computer to beat the beats. They're going to rely on some Gentiles. Say, hey, come here, let me give you some food. You're in, you're in prison? Well, let me, I'm here to comfort you. You've been naked because of, of that beast, that antichrist. Let me give you some clothing. And they don't realize what they're doing to the Jews that Jesus Christ is going to respect them and apply righteousness to them that, okay, come into the kingdom. Now, the rest of it is those who don't help the Jews. And again, it comes down to uh, verse 45. Then shall he answer them, saying, Very I say unto you, insomuch as ye did it not to one of these, uh, one of the least of these, you did it not unto me, and that would be the Jewish people. So, if you throw out the doctrine that we learned last week, that Jesus is Jewish, you could fill in your nationality, your race, your creed, your political stance into chapter, in chapter 25, and you say, well, look at us. You see, the good sheep were at this church, and anybody who wasn't part of this church well, Christ is going to cast you off into hell forever. That's the danger of the doctrine. Mm -hmm. That would be, well, Jesus came on to his own. Well, he started our church. We're the church of Jesus Christ. No. And when you're dealing with people and they got that doctrine that they're stealing from the Jews, say, hey, which tribe are you? There's millions of religions out there like that. Thousands, hundreds. They've stolen from, from the Jews. And they'll tell you, well, God's all finished with the Jews. No, he's not. No, not quite. Now, why would they think that Jesus and God are all done with the Jews, even though they're not? We're at the, we're at the, we're at the second advent in 25, Matthew 25. He still say, hey, you took care of the Jews, you took care of my people, come in. He's still sitting on the throne of David, Jewish. But why would they throw those doctrines to the wind? All right, Matthew 27, 20. Now we're going to look at the next part. They received him not. He came unto his own Jewish people, and the Jewish people did not receive him. Instead of giving him honor and glory, 
They gave him a crown of thorns. They gave him nails. They gave him whippings. They gave his beard being pulled. So Matthew 27, 20. But the chief priests, that would be the Levites of Jacob, of Isaac, of Abraham, Jewish. But the chief priests and the elders of the Jewish people persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. Okay? Here is the Jewish government. We would say in America that's the President, the House, and the Senate. And any cabinets, the chief priests and the elders. These are the main people, the main body of Israel. And they're saying about Jesus, we're going to destroy him. But Barabbas, the thief, the, the insurrection and all that, let him go. He's the sinner and Jesus is the sinless. Let him go. Mark 15, 13. Mark 15, 13. And we're just going to look at the scriptures. And come to the conclusion, please, also with these teachings, as much as the conclusion that Jesus is Jewish, come with the conclusion, walk away from this, the Jews hated Jesus. Come with another conclusion. No, I'm trying to figure out how to say it. Not everybody loves Jesus. When they say all oh, love Jesus, all oh, love God, absolutely not. And we're going to see that now. His own people. So, Mark 15, 13. And they cried out, crucify him. That's the Jewish people. And Pilate said, and why, what evil has he done? He's innocent. And they cried out the more exceedingly, crucify him. And Pilate wanted to content the people, release Barabbas onto him, and delivered Jesus. When they had scourged him, beat him. He's already been beat before the Sanhedrin. When they scourged him to be crucified. Verse 18, so we know what we're talking about. And began to salute and say, Hail, King of the Jews. King of the Jews. He's Jewish. Mark 15, 15.10. Uh, Go back to 10. For he knew that the chief priest, there they are again, had delivered him for envy. He took our crowds. He took our church people. He got more people. Mm -hmm. hey, look at the big crowds he got. They're paying attention to him. They're not paying attention to it. They're asking him questions. Why is he getting all the favor and honor? Envy. And that's Pilate saying that about them. That's Pilate. Luke 23, 18. Luke 23, 18. Now, let me say that the Jews, the Jewish people, put Jesus on the cross. But Jesus Christ gave his life. He gave up the ghost. The crucifixion didn't kill Jesus. He gave up his life. But the Jews put him on the cross. And as much as Joab and his brother, forget his name, are charged with the, with the murder of Abner, because you can think and be charged. Uh, Luke 23, verse 18. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who was, who was certain sedition made in the city, and for murder... He was cast in prison. Uh, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to him. But they cried, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! And he said unto them the third time, Why? What evil has he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him. Why? If he's innocent. And let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and the chief priest prevailed. There it is. There's the nation of Israel crying, crucify him. John 19, 6. These are the people this week ago. Hosanna to the highest. Throwing palm branches in their clothes 
in the pathway of, of the king coming on the mule. John 19, 6. When the chief priests, therefore, and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. How it said there unto them, Take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews, there it is, answer him, We have a law. And by our law he ought to die because he had made himself the Son of God. Mm. So they are. There's the ones. Those are the ones. He came unto his own, Jewish, and his own received them not. Mark 12.10. I'm just going to be just right through the Gospels. Mark 12.10. Now at this point, do religion say, yeah, this is the Jews, this is the Jews. But his brethren, that's us. Not, wait a minute, you can't have the brethren, that's us, and then have the same brethren cry and crucify. Oh, that's them. That's a double slander. That's not right. That's why we had to study who Jesus is. Now that's why we're studying now what's going on here, brethren. So Mark 12.10. And have ye not read the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and is marvelous in our eyes. And it has been prophesied. And even Jesus is prophesying because he has not been to Pilate's throne yet. You're going to reject him. Prophecy. He suffered and died according to the scriptures. One of them scriptures was, you're going to reject me. Uh, Matthew 8, 34. Here comes our brief. Matthew 8, 34. We've, we've met with people in the public ministry over the years. Everybody, you know, you don't need to do it. Everybody loves Jesus. You're in a la la land. You're taking too many drugs. Right. <laughs> because if everybody loved Jesus, now not counting last week and what maybe this week, but weeks past, months past, years past, you wouldn't hire somebody to shut up the gospel and then have the nerve, both of them, two times, both of them come, well, we're Christians too. And the second one, I said, well, if you're a Christian, why are you trying to draw out the gospel? That's not what, that's not what Jesus would have done. We had, a, we, we had one woman one time, hush, 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 hush. No, 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 no. Why are you still your hush? They don't want to hear it. That's people who don't love Jesus. We had a woman do that too. Senior citizen woman. They don't love Jesus. I mean... Uh, let's, uh, now, I don't know anything about, about the childhood of Jesus, okay? I don't know nothing. I'm going to speculate here. You can throw this in a garbage can. But wouldn't you think the children in Jesus' neighborhood would get upset that Jesus was so perfect child? He never done wrong. And he may even knew what you... I, I don't know. I have no idea what his childhood was like. But Mary had the perfect child. You know, I don't know. I have, so I'm, that's speculating. But verse 34, ready? This, I said that because Jesus is in Jerusalem. I mean, behold, ready? The whole city came out to meet Jesus. Our, amen, glory to God. Right? And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coast. There's Jesus. Really? That's you? You're the one that killed our pigs? Yeah. You see this clean man? You see how well he is? You see how dressed he is? You see he's on his right mind right now? He was possessed with devils, wicked devils. You see him now? Look, he's clean by the way. Get out of here. He came onto his own, and his own said, Get out. You killed our pigs. Pigs are unclean animals. So again, uh, Mark 6, 3. Mark 6, 3. 
Mark 6-3. Oh, this is a good one. This one you want to know, write down if you're ever going to deal with a Catholic. Mm -hmm. But it's not the subject of what we're talking about. But, but th th this is one of them Catholic verses that they hate. Put this on, put this on, a, on a quiz show question. <laughs> You go. But we're going to deal with verse 4, but we're going to read verse 3. Is not this the carpenter? Okay, maybe he was a carpenter. Who cares? The son of Mary. Oh, yeah. The brother of James and Joseph and Judah and Simeon. You mean Jesus had brothers? <laughs> right there. There you are. And are not his sisters with us? Okay, there you go. How can Mary be a perpetual virgin if she had... Four boys and sisters. Well, they, think she, they think she was a virgin all her life. Yep. Right. There you go. And are not his sisters with us? And they were offended at him. And Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but his own country, and among his own kin, and his own house. His own family. Except for Mary. His own family rejected him. Now how's that? How's that for the whole world, loving Jesus? His own brothers and sisters couldn't stand him. And that's what the scriptures say. Luke 4, 28. And if you want to talk about brother, his brother received... What closer brethren can you get than your kin? Your step-brothers. His steps, remember, step. They weren't blood-related. Mark 6, 3. We just did Mark 6, 3. We did? Luke 4. Oh, Luke 4, 28. Luke 4, 28. So, <laughs> your own brothers and sisters hate God. God, I said God, Jesus. Yeah. I don't think the whole world is going to... We talked about, was it last week or the week before, Christians are going to get raptured. And they're going to freak yeah. out because they're going to think, who is that? That's your Jesus. 4, 28. And all they in the synagogue, what's a synagogue? Who goes to synagogue? Jewish people. When they heard these things, they were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city. They had pushing Jesus out, thrusting him out of the city and led him to a brow of the hill wherein their city was built that they might cast him down headlong. They're gonna, they were going to throw Jesus off this hill to kill him. That's people in, in their own city. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Remarkable. Everybody's going to heaven. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. John 5, 43. Go through the Gospels. John 5, 43. When the scriptures said, he came on his own and they received him not. That's prophecy. Jesus often would tell his disciples, listen, we're going to Jerusalem. They're going to scourge me. They're going to crucify me. They're going to kill me. They're going to... And they're like, they had other plans. They had other ideas. Their mind wasn't focused on it. It's prophecy. Jesus even prophesied of it. Um, John 5, 43. I am come in my Father's name, Jehovah. Lay that on a Jehovah witness. And ye receive me not. How more clear can you get at the close of Jesus? This one don't have dates. At the close coming of the end of Jesus' life, his own words, red letter if you got that kind of Bible. But the words of Jesus, red letter or not, he says, at the end of his life, he's come talking to the Jews, you receive me not. And we're in John 5. What did John 1 say? His own received him not. There are, yes, there are Jews going to hell. But there are Jews going to heaven. He's not finished with them. So that was John 5. Catch up. John 10, 22. John 10, 22. We're just looking at the places in the Bible where yeah. they just love Jesus. Not. Nah. <laughs> in John 10, 22.
Now, there were many Jews that received them. Peter, James, John, Andrew, uh, Ma Matthew, uh, Nicodemus, John of Artem Artemis. Now, now, they're plenty of Jews, but we're looking at they received them not. And we're looking at there were Jews that didn't like him, and we got to look at the world does not all the world loves Jesus. So 22, and it was at Jerusalem, that's the city of the Jews, the capital, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. That's the temple. That's the temple. That's where the Jews go. That's their holy place. Then came the Jews round about him. They surround him. And said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. You know, he has... Jesus answered, and I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. And they must be going to hell if they're not the sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I, gave, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Then shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And if you're not my sheep, you get the opposite. My Father which gave, me, gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Now this is a verse that they hated and the Jehovah Witnesses hate. I and my Father are one. Now the reaction. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone them. All right, here's the message, folks. Altar call. And they're picking up rocks. And... It, Jewish stoning is Jewish capital punishment. They were going to kill Jesus right there with rock. But the scriptures say, not a bone of him shall be broken. So they couldn't kill him. They couldn't cast the stones. Prophecy said, you're not going to do it. Prophecy said, you're going to reject me. Matthew 12, 14. Matthew 12, 14. Now these are the ringleaders. These are the religious people. Religious. Religious. You know Jesus, and he's not, but you know if he were to come back today, you know all the churches would put him back on the cross. How do you know? Have you, been, have you been in their churches? Who's on the cross right now? Jesus. They've never taken him off the cross even though he's risen. And I said, 12, 14. Then the Pharisees, religious, went out and held a council against him that they might destroy him. Look at that word, destroy. Because he healed a man on the Sabbath day. They weren't got joy, joy, joy down deep in their heart. They're trying to kill God. Jesus. Luke 20, 13. Luke 20, verse 13. It's remarkable. So, I got another thing to say. And, ooh, windy. I got another thing to say, and it's going to upset some Christians. The, the, the famous thought was, is, Luke 20, verse 13, if I was there, I would not have cried, crucified. If I was there, I would have been at the cross supporting Jesus. The whole entire nation was against him. It was only Mary, John, and a few women there at the cross. I don't think you would have despised the world. And you better not have thought if I was there. Because the whole nation was against him. You're going to stand out. And Luke 20, verse 13. Then said the Lord of the vineyard, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son, Jesus. It may be that they will receive him, when they shall see him. But when the husbandmen, that would be the people of Israel, the religious folk, saw him, they reasoned among themselves, which we just read, the council, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. And that's just what we read in Matthew 12, 14. Let's hold a meeting. And what's the meeting? We're going to kill God's son. 
and he has to give it to us. Wow, that's really loving Jesus. Mm. You know? Luke 22, 2. Now, there's a lot of things said by Christians in churches that are just absolutely full. Mm -hmm. Here's another one. What we're talking about now. Do you get the fact that people hated Jesus? And they didn't want his company. And yet you see church billboards all over the place. All are welcome. Really? You're going to invite people who hate Jesus in your assembly? And then you wonder why the churches are bad. Luke 22, 2. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. <laughs> and then Satan entered into Judas. Satan found that opportunity more. They want to kill him. All right, I'll send you the man. I'll send you the one. He'll help you out. He'll take care of you. He'll put Jesus on the cross. John 5. Back to the Gospel of John. One day we'll get to these chapter 5. But John 5, 18. How about telling somebody that Jesus is God and God is Jesus as I do? Because Jehovah Witnesses is a primary demo, de, de, yeah, demonic, but domineering religion down here, I see. So I'm going to proclaim that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. Because they say otherwise. But watch this. John 5, 18. Therefore the Jews. Therefore the Jews. Okay, we've got our people. Sought the more to kill him. Because he had not only broken the Sabbath. Ooh, but said also that God was his father. Making himself equal with God. So if... Jesus were to come today, and he's not, and if he were walking to the assembly hall of the Jehovah Witnesses and said, I am God, they would, they would kill him. That's exactly what he told the Jews. Do not the Jehovah Witnesses proclaim to be the 144,000? Are they not Jewish? They have stolen the... Je so no Jehovah Witness would welcome Jesus, who they proclaim is Michael, the archangel. There's a difference between, I can have M I C H A E L, I think that's Michael, that was Michelle, and J E S U S. There's a big difference. I think the Holy Spirit knows the difference in the Bible. But because Jesus said he's God, they were going to kill him. And he broke the Sabbath. John 7 1. John 7 1. Be a while before we get to seven. Mm -hmm. John seven one. Now after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. That's Jewish land. For he would not walk, walk in Jewry. Would not walk amongst the Jews. They hated him. He couldn't even walk amongst his brethren. Because the Jews sought to kill him. How's that? He had to hide from the Jews. From his own. Hide from his own. He's on the run, so to speak. But he's not on the run because this is all prophecy, remember? He knows what he's doing. He's God. He knows what they're thinking. He knows where he needs to be. He knows what, what's supposed to be happening. But the Jews, all the Jews now, and they're... And there are Jews there I'll be willing to turn him into the Pharisees. Hey, there he is over there. Go get him. You know what's going to happen in the tribulation period with the Antichrist? He's going to put a price on his Jewish heads because they put a price on Jesus' head. And those Jews are not going to be able to walk amongst the nations and their own people. Mm -hmm. Because people are going to turn him in. People are going to hand him over. The troops of the Antichrist, whatever he's going to have, is going to be after the Jews because... 7-1, they were after Jesus. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Now, God has not given up on the Jews, but Jacob's trouble is a spanking on the hiney because you've done wrong. This moment, you are chasing Jesus and ready to kill him. I am going to give you definitely, definitely, three and a half years called the Great Tribulation, where if I catch you, you're going to lose your head. 
And John says, I've seen the souls under the throne of the, those saints that lost their heads for the word of God. So, Matthew 13, 57. Don't let anybody ever tell you that everybody loves Jesus. I haven't heard that one yet. Oh, they will. God loves everybody. Oh, I've heard that. You mean God would love the people that put him on the cross? Really? Unless they repented. Matthew 13, 57. Again, we've read this, but back it up. And they were offended in him. You know what the, you know the greatest crime today in America is? Besides doing anything to animals? Number one. You offended me. That's the biggest crime. You cannot say certain words because you're offensive. I, I, the other day, what was it? What was the word that... Oh, man. Oh, come on, I, I can't think. No, what was it? And it's offensive to people. Uh, your mind's not all there. You're... Anything. Retard. Now I just said a bad word. I was supposed to say R. Because it offends people. That's right. They were offended in Jesus. You realize when Jesus came, the nation of Israel was really sick. Diseases, devils, blind, maimed, withered hands. You realize the world today is sick? And they still, again, now are being offended. All the world, not just America, all the world are offensive. You can't say Oriental. That's offensive. You can't say certain words that certain people say, even though they say it in their own music. That's offensive. They were offended in Jesus. And when you preach the gospel, when you bring the gospel to the public, whether door to door, preach in the street, handing out gospels, they find it offensive. And one of the things they'll say is, Jesus wouldn't do that. Uh, you're, you're turning people away. You're closing the businesses down. I'm offended that you're standing here. I'm a Christian. I let my light shine, but I don't do what you do. You don't know the Bible. And you're on the opposite cause. You are offended because of Jesus. When they were offended in him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works, there because of their unbelief. Look at that. There are things that Jesus could not do because they hated him. How's that? That's, that's an interesting statement. Why I brought us here to 58. Because they were offended in Jesus. Jesus could not do everything he wanted to do. Matthew 2, 20. Matthew 2.20 I love how God gives a natural air conditioner. All he's going to do is winter when it's, when it's warm. 2.20 Because we would be hot right now without this breeze. Matthew 2.20 Alright, no, okay, yeah. 2.20, verse 19, we'll start. But when Herod was dead, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph, and he, saying, Arise and take the young child, that's Jesus, and his mother, Mary, and go into in the land of Egypt, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. When Jesus was about two years old, after the Magi, the wise men came, we don't know how many, there was a death put upon the head of Jesus. So much that Herod said, every child around the age of two and under, kill them all. That's the Roman government saying, we want the head of Jesus. You know, the Roman church saying, we want the head of Jesus. He's only a baby. Has he even opened his mouth yet? Unable to open his mouth yet. And the government says, kill him. That's the Roman. That's the Gentiles. That's the Gentiles that hate him, Jesus. 26.16, Matthew 26.16. When you do any public ministry, any, you're going to find people that are going to hate Jesus. 
be warned, be knowledge. Do not be offended. Jesus said, know, not that, know, know you not the world hated me before it hated you. Matthew 26, 16. And from that time he saw from that time he saw opportunity to betray him. That's Judas. That is one of the twelve. That's the man that sit in the church of Jesus. That's the man who had the healing, who had the signs that Jesus sent two by two on all the land. Judas had those signs of the apostles. And Judas, one of the twelve, said, I want opportunity to nail him. Now, if one of your close inner circle is out to get you, and I'm telling you right now, if we build a church, that's up to the Lord, don't be surprised there will be people that come will be out to get the preacher. It happens. And preachers get so upset, and yet it's in the Bible. There'll be people trying to serve the authority. There'll be people trying to get other people. I've seen all kinds of things. and I've been saved since 1987. Mm -hmm. I've seen all kinds of scams come into churches. And they say, well, how can that person come and, and, and do that all to me? In the this Judas did it to Jesus. Who do you think you are that's not going to happen to you? Mm -hmm. Putting yourself on a big pedal still, aren't you? Many preachers. They get all cry, oh, the church split and all that. John chapter 6, verse 66, the church split. Jesus' church split. Many walked away. Uh, we're at 26. 26, verse 59. Same chapter, verse 59. Alright, so there's one, there's a person in your own being. Now, when we see the chief priests, realize those are the priests, those are the Levites of Aaron. God set up the children of Aaron to be the priest. Jesus is God. So the ones that Jesus set up to be the priest of the nation of Israel, here we go. Now the chief priests were set up by God, and the elders and all the councils sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death. Will you lie for Jesus for us? Will you lie for Jesus for us? And the Bible states that they found many they just couldn't agree with each other. Yea, if Jesus said, Marvel not the world hates you, know that it hated me first. Don't be marveled. The fact is that people are going to lie against you. They lied against Jesus. If they hate Jesus, they'll hate his people. That's why they call this Christians. So, one more place, Mark 14, 1. Mark 14, 1. Two more verses, Mark 14, 1. And these are the Jews. And religions will use the fact that Jews put Jesus on the cross so God's all finished with them. Absolutely not. Mark 14, 1. After two days was the feast of the Passover. That is the, pa that is the feast that started the nation of Israel. That's the feast where they came out of Egypt. They are now God's people. They are now left Egypt. They're going to the promised land. Now after two days was the feast of the Passover and the unleavened bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft, by craftiness, and put him to death. How can we trick him? How can we get him up? It's supposed to be the most memorialist mental of our Jewish heritage, the Passover. Where is he? I'm going to kill him. Let's catch him. Remarkable. And do you know who the Passover lamb is? John said, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That Passover lamb that they're looking to kill. Huh. Yeah, they're going to kill him. Prophecy. He suffered and died according to scriptures. Yes, it was prophesied that they want to kill the Passover lamb. But they're not speaking about Jesus, though the scriptures do. Verse 11, Mark 14, 11, last verse. 
This is well, verse 10. We'll look at it. Mark 14, 10. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he saw how they might conveniently betray him. Judas was all too happy. The chief priests were all too happy to sell Jesus out. So, again, these last few verses we're looking at. Don't be surprised as a Christian if someone sells you out. It happened to Jesus. Don't be surprised if they hire people to lie about you. It happened to Jesus. Don't be surprised if they catch you and put handcuffs on you. They did it to Jesus in the garden. He came unto his own, and his own received them not. We are Christians. We are to walk as Christ walked. And when people come up and call you every name, yell at you and scream at you, tell you're out of your mind, when your family tells you, I'm done with you, I've had it, you're cook, you're a coal, and all that. When you're getting harassed, and they're plotting things against you, they're plotting to stop you from doing what you're doing, relax. It all happened to Jesus. Plain and simple. Something great to look forward to. But, if we suffer with Him, we shall reign with Him. That's right. It would be something worse for the Jews. I mean, you're God's people. Can you imagine a Jewish person in the millennium, in their land, and they got an answer to a Gentile who has been put on the throne because we worship and honor the Messiah. Amen. Lord God, I just thank you for this time. And Lord, I thank you. I'm not one of them that rejected you. Lord, I don't know how much I rejected you to the day I received you as my Savior. Lord God, I thank you for that light. I thank you for the light for the scriptures. Lord, I pray for those people trying to stop the word of God is only their nature by the Bible. Well, Lord, may each of us here be blessed by your word. Lord, may we go forth and have somebody we can talk to. Though they may hate you or though they may love you. Lord, may the word of God be exalted. Help us all, Lord God. And thank you, Lord God, for Louise getting this job and Help her, Lord God. Help her be able to stand the full time. Lord, uh, yes. let her ring the joy bells of, of Jesus Christ and not the Salvation Army. And Lord, may her, her ask, uh, may they give her permission to pass out tracts, which I doubt, but Lord, you're capable of doing all things. Lord, this bless this time. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Thank you. Don't go don't don't get in front of a Walmart. I will